G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back to my channel. Well, I found some interesting news here, so we're all waiting to see what happens. It is Monday here in Australia, and likely Monday morning uh, over in the States, but it's Labor Day over in the States, so it's a public holiday. We need to wait for tomorrow morning to see what's going to happen when the market's open. That's really going to be the key indicator of sort of where the market's going to go. But I did found an interesting story here. So, Bitcoin is braced for a massive week. Bitcoin has struggled this week with wild price swings keeping traders on their toes. The Bitcoin price, down 12% on seven days ago, is bouncing around $10,000 per Bitcoin as bullish investors jump at the opportunity to buy under the psychological level. With the former chief of Prudential Securities naming Labor Day, Monday 7th of September, or September 7th, sorry, as a potential turning point for Bitcoin adoption and investment, the crypto market could be heading into a big week. Last month, George Ball, the executive chief of investment firm Sanders Morris Harris and former chief executive of Prudential Securities, said he expects there to be a surge of Bitcoin buying after Labor Day, branding current global markets as stuck in the summer doldrums with investors waiting for a spark that he thinks will ignite in early September. Ball is the latest in a growing line of high-profile established investors, led by famed uh, Paul Tudor Jones in May, who have espoused Bitcoin as a potential hedge against the inflation they see coming as a result of unprecedented coronavirus-induced stimulus measures. Bitcoin and crypto traders were spooked this week by a sell-off in equity markets that saw the S&P 500 re record its first weekly loss in six weeks, while the Nasdaq posted its worst weekly performance since March. The Bitcoin price dipped under the key $10,000 $10,000 level on Friday for the first time since late July, dealing a blow to many bullish Bitcoin investors who have increasingly claimed Bitcoin has begun behaving as a so-called safe haven asset similar to gold. Bitcoin's volatility is a key characteristic as an asset class, Paolo, Paolo Dinio, Chief Technology Officer at Hong Kong-based Bitcoin and cryptocurrency exchange Bitfinex said via email. So, we're going to have to wait and see. Can it hold that two uh, ten thousand dollar level? It has dipped below. It's but it's only wicked below. There haven't been any sort of candle bodies that have dipped below. So we can go over here and have a look. And again, so ten thousand sort of five hundred. Uh, that is resistance. But that ten thousand dollar level has been support, and we can see uh, it basically as soon as it gets down near this kind of ten thousand one hundred dollar level, it just rebounds off it straight away. It will wick below but it won't sort of hold. And we can see that it even wicked down here and oh so close to that $9,700 range for the CME gap to fill. That's really what I'm waiting for. And look, if the CME gap fills, I probably suspect we'll go a little bit lower. And I wouldn't uh, be surprised if we didn't come back to where all this kind of move started. So I definitely could see us coming back and testing sort of $9,000, $9,200 level but I'm not saying it will. I really would be, you know, somewhat surprised if it didn't bounce off uh, this key sort of uh, mark that we broke out of. So again, the long-term trend, uh, we've broke out above it, so I would be surprised to see it come back down. But again, I wouldn't be too surprised if we didn't come back and retest this before moving upwards. Now, there's a lot of theories out there, you know, people doing their Elliott waves and ABC corrections and all the rest of it. And some people are saying that we could come back down and test this $3,000 level. Look, I don't know about that. Anything's possible, but I think it's highly unlikely. I couldn't imagine anyone is not going to snap up Bitcoin if it gets down, really, back to this $9,000 level where we were uh, before this last kind of major move. We've already seen that after the pandemic, everyone snapped it up at 4000 and it just rose and rose and rose. So really... Yeah, I just I can't see that happening. But we'll have to wait and see. Look, anything's possible, uh, but I just don't see it. Again, I would be surprised if it broke through this uh, trend line that we break out of. But if it does break through the $9,600 to $9,700 level, again, the CME gap fills, I'm not going to be surprised if we don't come back and uh, retest this mark where we uh, made that last kind of move. So yeah, $9,100, we will wait and see. Another interesting story I found uh, is Ripple. So, you know, loved by some 
and hated by many is the way I would describe XRP. Now, look, I'm a fan and I'm bullish on uh, XRP. Uh, I've got myself a good position in XRP. And it's because of all the regulation that makes me think uh, it's going to be used in the future. There's no more, there's no coin with more regulation that I know of anyway than XRP. Now, depending on who you listen to and all the rest of it, there is talk about some pretty crazy prices for XRP in the future. Now, look, I don't like to make price predictions. I'm not exactly, you know, sure how high it's going to go. But in this bull run, I wouldn't be surprised if we saw $10. I think $10 is probably somewhat reasonable for XRP in this bull run. But if it does gain mass adoption, you know, all the banks jump on board and the IMF decide to use it as a world currency and all the rest of it, who knows what this uh, could go to. But it is so regulated, why wouldn't people use it? You know, why wouldn't the banks use it? Why wouldn't the IMF use it? You know, Ethereum not regulated and I'm not knocking Ethereum I love Ethereum I'm bullish on Ethereum but they're not regulated Ripple has a number of jobs out and they have for a while now seeking people to help with compliance issues so this goes to say Ripple continues to grow and as a result increases its demand for personnel as well as the desire to increase its compliance with regulations in a recent job ad, the payment solutions company is looking for a BSA research analyst to expand its compliance with US Bank Secretary Act. So that's the BSA. So they're out there, they're doing the work and they have been for a long, long time. And you know, a lot of people who get into cryptocurrencies and I'm one of them, you know, we wanna get away from all this centralized sort of stuff and you know, being over-regulated and things like that. And, and I agree, but we're never going to get mass adoption without regulation and that's unfortunately just the truth of it you can you know harp, harp on all you want about oh we need to move away from that and I, I love the idea of it but i just don't see it happening i don't see bitcoin being adopted as a world currency it's too slow i see it as a store of wealth absolutely but xrp is fast it'd have to be one of the fastest cryptocurrencies out there it can scale they are starting their own uh, what is it, smart contracts platform. They've had it for ages. It just hasn't really been rolled out wide scale. And again, it is compliant with most laws and they're trying to get it, you know, as compliant as anything can possibly be. That's what makes me bullish on XRP. Now, I'm not, you know, trying to talk up all these kind of, you know, theories about how much it's going to be worth. But, you know, there's people, again, in this bull run, I wouldn't be surprised if we made $10. That's 10 US dollars. I wouldn't be surprised if we went higher. But there is talk, again, depending on who you listen to and, you know, to, who you follow on Twitter and YouTube and all the rest of it, of it going to $100. I can tell you if uh, XRP went to $100, I would be extremely happy. I wouldn't be rich enough to retire, but I would be stoked. There's talk about it going to $1,000. If XRP went to $1,000 per XRP, I would never have to work again. I would be, I'd be well off. Not ultra rich, I wouldn't be up there with, yeah, you know, the uh, Jeff Bezos and, you know, things like that, but I wouldn't have to work again and that'd be pretty good. And then there's, you know, the real wild talk of it being $10,000 because there's a lot of talk that XRP is meant to be a stable coin, but a high price stable coin. If XRP went to $10,000, good Lord, anyone with more than you know 30 or 40 XRP, they would be living the absolute dream and probably never have to work again. I don't know if it'll ever go to $10,000 in my lifetime. It'd be bloody amazing if it did. I would, yeah, I would live one hell of a lifestyle. But $10, again, XRP goes to $10, I'm gonna be pretty happy. Uh, again, I won't be anywhere near rich enough to retire, but I'll be doing all right. $100, still not enough for me to really retire, or at least not retire wealthy. I could possibly retire, but the government would take half of it, so then I wouldn't really have a whole lot. But, you know, we start talking about XRP at $100, 1000 or $10,000 per XRP. Well, yep, yeah, I'd be cheering. But very interesting, and again, that's why I'm bullish on XRP. I understand that, you know, we're all about that decentralization and moving away from centralization and being over-regulated. But to be mass adopted, 
unfortunately that is what it's going to take we are going to have to be you know hopefully not too heavily regulated but it will need to be somewhat centralized as well you know to, for it to be mass adopted they're going to want to have someone that they can call or send an email to when they're having problems with it you don't have that with bitcoin at the moment you can't get in contact with the person who owns bitcoin and say look here's my problems with it uh, you know that's what happens with decentralization but anyway last but not least move over to coin gecko and we have a look we'll just refresh this so 332 billion not doing too bad again i was i was expecting us to possibly dip back down into the kind of 200 billion dollar mark we haven't done that so far but again i am really waiting to see what happens tomorrow when the markets reopen uh, over in the states labor day everyone's got the public holiday off yeah we'll have to wait and see if that cme gap gets filled and if it does if it just rebounds straight off it or again falls back down to maybe that kind of nine thousand two hundred dollar range you know where we were before you know the, this last big move that we've had but it's not all bad news there are some pretty good gains so as we can see in the last 24 hours there's coins are doing well doing well sorry excuse me i'm going to put it out there stay away from sushi don't touch it that's my personal advice not financial advice but you know i don't give financial advice i wouldn't touch this with a 10 foot pole and i wouldn't touch yams i didn't touch yams with a 10 foot pole i'm staying away from all this kind of stuff what i am happy to see is block stacks up that's good i'm into block stack i'm into chain link i'm into kyber network i'm into ren i'm into Aave. so again some of my coins are slowly but surely making their way up uh, and these are generally the coins that I'm still in the positives. I'm still in the green, uh, even with these massive pullbacks. But unfortunately, some of my others, uh, polka dots, hurt me a little bit. Digibytes uh, hurt me a fair bit. Uh, Unibright has hurt me a lot. I think I'm at a 50% loss now. And I'm, you know, I'm in an iron about what do I do. But I'm just going to have to wait and see. If this is truly the bottom of this correction, then it can only go up from here. But if it's not, then I may have to. Yeah, strongly consider about getting out but again i'm more of an investor than a day trader i can handle losses and you know i never put that much into things like uni bright and that as well so really if they went to kind of nothing i've only lost a couple of hundred dollars at most on, on any one of those you know it'd be more if bitcoin and ethereum uh, and ripple went to zero that's where i'd really start to hurt well that's it from me let me know how you're going uh, and whether you think you know tomorrow is going to be the key indicator for what's going to happen do you think the cme gap is going to fill and if the cme gap fills do you think we'll go lower or will that be kind of the point where we bounce and start to make our way back up higher stay safe be kind to one another hopefully you're on at least some of these gain trains today and haven't been completely utterly wrecked over the last weekend and i'll see you next time